So this morning I uh, finished discussing about, uh, about the ancient woodland inventory and uh, an assessment of the, of the inventory using historical estate maps. Um, now I'm interested in the ecological implications of, the, of these findings uh, with again a focus on the ancient woodland. I will, my presentation, you will see, will be much shorter than the one of this morning, and I will actually provide more questions than I will uh, uh, show answers. Um, so I did some woodland survey, uh, vascular plants only, unfortunately. Uh, I would have liked to do more like like chance, but uh, it, it was not possible for my, my PhD. Uh, I selected about uh, 40 woodland sites with different uh, continuity. Some are uh, 18th century woodlands, some are uh, plantations from the 19th century, and uh, a very small sample of six woodlands are actually much more recent from uh, post-1860. Uh, uh, 41 woodland sites, uh, 58 plots. So you, know, you have an idea of where the woodlands uh, were, um, uh, are located. Uh, they are native woodlands. Uh, they were identified using estate maps because the estate maps uh, really can provide a great opportunity to have strong case studies. Uh, woodlands for which we know uh, the history since uh, 1772 for most of them, or uh, even before for, uh, for a few others. And um, the aim of this, uh, of this survey was to see if actually we could see any difference between these ancient woodland sites and uh, 19th century uh, plantations, 19th century woodland sites. Can we distinct ecologically uh, these two types of, uh, of woods? I put here uh, some ancient bullet indicator species that I found uh, in the field. So I used uh, the list uh, by uh, Crawford 2009 for, for it, and also a list from uh, local uh, foresters who uh, were uh, sent to me afterwards. Um, it's not a comprehensive list, of course, uh, much more than that. If you have more questions about all the plant species found in the field, you can ask me afterwards. I don't remember all of them, but uh, I'm happy to discuss this uh, in more detail with you later. So what we can find is that uh, in most cases, this uh, indicator species, uh, we find them indeed more in uh, antique woodland sites than we find them in 19th century, uh, century woods. Uh, you have a few examples here uh, about uh, pig nut, yellow pimpernel, uh, wood anemone, uh, we discussed this uh, earlier, uh, dog's mercury. Uh, that being said, they are of course also very common in uh, much more modern woodlands. Uh, it's not a surprise, a lot of people uh, know that already. That's why when we think about uh, woodland ecology, plant communities, we take the communities as a whole and not only individually one species. One species alone is obviously not enough to indicate an ancient woodland uh, or not. So I put a few more EC here uh, with sage, uh, here with rush. Uh, Bluebells, for instance, that I often see as an indicator species of ancient woodland, but that was found in 83% of the more modern, uh, more modern woodlands. Uh, also, this list changed in Scotland. It's not the same everywhere, so it's also something I took into account, as you will see uh, later on. Uh, if we think about uh, species richness, so A are the 18th century woodlands, class B are the uh, uh, plantations from the before 1860 and class C plantations after 1860. So as you see, we have a very small sample here while we have a comparable sample between A and B. Uh, in terms of uh, plant species richness, we don't actually uh, find uh, any statistical difference. Uh, it's not surprising. A lot of uh, studies uh, in the UK as in, uh, in mainland Europe we uh, found exactly the same. So I'm not going to discuss this uh, much more now, but if we look at the number of ancient woodland uh, species or indicator species, we see indeed that in the oldest woodland, uh, continuity A, uh, we have a statistically significant difference between uh, A, B, and C. Uh, that's, uh, that's the median, and I uh, reported the mean uh, here also. Uh, that being said, I visited a lot of uh, 19th century plantations with many ancient woodland indicator species. So that's something I think would be interesting to, to discuss together. At what is a threshold? There is a risk, I think, that if we visit woodland sites and we find a lot of indicator species, uh, we would say it's an ancient woodland, while it's actually not necessarily an ancient woodland. Does that really matter in terms of woodland conservation? Uh, probably not, uh, as long as it's uh, an interesting uh, woodland in terms of biodiversity. But I think it, it was already uh, an, an interesting, uh, interesting findings. Of course, as I mentioned earlier, this indicator species, at least change over time. 
And uh, a lot of ecologists not only stick to this uh, recording of indicator species, but they take the plant community as a whole. And to identify, to study the plant community as a whole, we have to go through more advanced uh, analysis, uh, including a multivariate uh, analysis. Analysis, as a, sorry, as the, I know actually that you. <laughs> Uh, one of the very common ones is correspondence analysis. Uh, analysis. Um, I'm not going very much into the detail of how it is done, uh, but it's a type of technique that you find uh, used by uh, experts of uh, ancient woodlands, for instance, in Belgium, Hermie and Farayan, or uh, Dupuis in France, or uh, Monica Wolf in, in Germany. It's, uh, it's typically the type of, uh, of uh, analysis that uh, people use, uh, this uh, detrended correspondence analysis. Uh, it's a graph, and uh, each dot represents a woodland site. And the woodland sites which are near each other on the graph basically tend to share the same plant community. Uh, and normally we do this type of uh, analysis to see if we find clusters of woodlands which are ancient, and for instance, clusters of woodlands which are more recent. That's uh, what is found in many uh, studies by, uh, by Belgian researchers, uh, notably. Uh, what I found on my uh, study area is actually there is a very strong overlap. A lot of uh, 19th century woodlands have a very close uh, plant community uh, than, uh, than 18th century woodlands. Uh, what I found also is that woodlands which are, which are located near each other are actually also uh, more likely to share the same plant community, which shows that species are able to move from ancient core, for instance, to the plantations around. Uh, Indicator species are often considered, regarded as uh, slow colonizers uh, because they have certain plant traits. That means that it's more difficult for them to, to move through, through the landscape. Uh, the results of the analysis shows that actually some of the species indicator of ancient, ancient woodland are actually very, can quickly uh, colonize a new, uh, new area very fast. Uh, I have some woodland, for instance, in, um, that was planted in the 1950. Uh, that was near an ancient woodland, and after uh, 60, 70 years, I already found eight, nine indicator species of ancient woodland uh, in this, uh, um, in this uh, wood. Uh, again, the idea of this is really to show that estate maps are uh, very good tools to also study, for instance, the ability of indicator species to uh, colonize new woodlands, to uh, identify the impact of uh, past land cover land use, for instance, uh, on a woodland community because you have all this information that are in estate maps, so it's very like a unique uh, insight uh, about evolution of the woodland uh, over time. Um, so some key findings here are that I could not find any systematic uh, distinction between a probable ancient woodlands. I mentioned ancient woodlands, but actually, as I said earlier, we use estate maps, so we cannot also say that this woodland on 18th century map are, are ancient. They may also be uh, some plantations. So I uh, use a shortcut when I say ancient woodland. Uh, so no systematic distinction between probable ancient woodland and recent woodland sites. So there is a high risk of recog incorrectly recognizing recent woodland sites as ancient. Uh, that's, uh, that's something I, I, could, uh, I could find. Um, the geographic local location of the site seems to account for part of the variation observed in plant assemblage. What I should also mention is that uh, the wet woodlands, uh, for instance, share more plant communities uh, than the other type of woodlands. Uh, I could also find the influence of acidity, pH, which is nothing surprising in it, but it all can help to blur this distinction between modern woodland and uh, ancient woodland in terms of uh, plant communities. Uh, we can imagine that there is a risk, uh, I mentioned earlier, that the accuracy of this ancient woodland inventory is, uh, is not good everywhere in the study area. We, as I mentioned earlier, between 40 and 50% of these ancient woodlands in the inventory are actually not ancient woodlands. If we visit them in the site, uh, we may re recognize them as ancient woodland based on their uh, plant community. So it can be a kind of a circular problem where it's difficult to identify what is ancient, what is ancient woodland indicator species, how to disentangle this is, uh, is challenging in itself. So it's, again, what I would like to bring as a discussion uh, rather than uh, telling you what is ancient or not ancient. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the woodlands located near ancient woodland sites, the recent ones, so 19th century plantations, 
uh, can be particularly rich in uh, ancient woodland plant species. And it's possible that these ancient woodlands uh, act as the reservoirs from which the species will move to uh, more recent plantations around, which makes the identification of ancient woodland sites even, uh, even more challenging. Uh, and again, a lot of uh, ancient woodland plant species could develop in recent woodland sites, including the 20th century. We could find, uh, as I said, uh, eight uh, uh, ancient woodland plant indicator species in modern woodland uh, because of its ability to, to move uh, in the, to uh, the landscape, which also actually uh, highlights the ecological value of not only ancient woodlands, but uh, 19th century uh, and 20th century woods. But there are also key questions about this, which are how do we define the boundaries of ancient woodlands? We know, for instance, that uh, when we think about how many indicator species of ancient woodland, we also have to consider the size of the wood as a whole. The problem is that we don't know exactly the boundaries of the ancient woodlands, uh, stricter census. So for instance, uh, this wood that I present this morning, which is a triple S uh, I and ancient woodland, the old woodland is considered as ancient. Actually, this area in dark green is ancient, and uh, what we see below was uh, plant later plantations, for instance. Uh, if I'm an ecologist, I would be interested, for instance. I could not access this area because it was too steep and too uh, complicated to, to access. But uh, it could be like a case study using estate maps to see how the plants were able to move from this, this part of the wood to this part. So it's a, really the value of estate map, and that's really what I would like to insist on uh, today. Um, identifying the boundaries is complicated because uh, if you look at a woodland reconstruction over time, you will see that the wood cover is a kind of a mosaicing of uh, woods of different age, different plantations from the uh, 18th century, 19th century, or, or later. So there is nothing stable in the environment. And uh, if you read uh, historical sources, historical archives, or uh, if you uh, look also at estate maps, you will see that even the nature of the wood, even the ancient one, may, might have changed over time. Some plantation of uh, coniferous could have happened in ancient woodland, removed afterwards. And we can imagine that all this has an influence on the biodiversity of the, of the wood today. And it's very difficult indeed to um, isolate this variable of ancientness uh, from everything that happened uh, over time since, uh, since the last 200 years at least. Uh, I throw here some, some questions which are not all mine. They are questions that you find uh, by, for instance, uh, uh, Monica Wolf in Germany, by Dupuy in France, by uh, Hermie and Farian in, uh, in Belgium. Do indicator species actually grow on soils with historically low disturbance? Are they really indicators of ancientness? Or are they indicators of uh, low disturbance of, uh, of the soil? Uh, what is the importance of past management, uh, plantation of non-native species, uh, the grazing regimes that have changed over time? All these factors might have influenced uh, the ecology of the woods today and also blur the distinction between ancient woodland uh, communities, uh, plant communities, and more modern woods. Um, what is the impact of former arable land? Actually, in my study area, most of the woods were, uh, were meadowed before. They were not arable lands. And the people who show in the past the uh, difference between uh, ancient woodland plant species and uh, more modern woodlands, I studied woodlands that, were, that grow on the former arable land for which we would expect that the disturbance of the soil is much more important. Disturbance on the seed bank, seed bank disturbance of the chemistry of the soils, for instance. And uh, it's probable that uh, former arable land have a long-term persistence uh, that will hamper the establishment of, uh, of woodland uh, specialist species. Uh, a lot of discussions about uh, refuges in the landscape. Uh, wood anemone, for instance, uh, can be found in ditches and edges in, uh, in the UK. Uh, it has been documented. Maybe it does grow from there and then could colonize uh, modern woodland plantations and again contribute to, to, to blurring this uh, ecological distinction. Uh, and finally, of course, we haven't discussed this yet, but what is the cutoff date to define a woodland as ancient? In Scotland, it's 1750. In England, it's 1600. Uh, in Belgium, as far as I can remember, it's some time uh, mid 18th century. In France, it's early 19th century. So we all have different cutoff dates for practical reasons. We use 1750 in Scotland because of the Roy's map, but uh, other people uh, use earlier dates because they had earlier evidence or later dates because they didn't have earlier evidence. But uh, if we are talking about ancientness and uh, the impact on, 
on the woodland ecology, of course, uh, it is something to, to, to consider uh, the, what is the cutoff date to define a precisely ancient woodland. Um, repeated observations are needed. Again, I cannot uh, say it enough, the importance of estate maps to identify case studies, uh, assessing the impact of past land use, assessing the ability of uh, woodland plant species to colonize uh, new woods, uh, how fast they can, what species can easily uh, establish or what species cannot establish easily. Uh, I think estate maps are, are really good to, for that type of uh, ecological study uh, in general. And I think that's it. Thank you.